Thank you for the invitation to be with you today. This is a very timely event coming almost a year to the day that global equity markets experienced the worst drop since Black Monday in 1987, triggered by the epic shock of the COVID-19 pandemic. And since then, as we all know, the pandemic has fundamentally altered our lives uh, at a very personal level, but also professionally. COVID-19 has also marked a watershed in the work of the Financial Stability Board. As the first serious test of the resilience of the global financial system since the 2008 financial crisis, the pandemic has provided us with a real life assessment of the global regulatory framework put in place after 2008 and of international cooperation uh, on financial stability through the FSB. So today I would like to elaborate on what this watershed means for the FSB's work in 2021 and beyond. I'll focus on three themes. First, the need to address the lessons learned from COVID-19 for financial stability. Second, the need to harness the benefits of innovation to support a strong and sustainable recovery from the pandemic. And third, the importance of global cooperation, not least to preserve an integrated global financial system. So the COVID-19 shock hit a global financial system that is, at its core, much more resilient than at the onset of the 2008 financial crisis. Banks and financial market infrastructures in particular were able to absorb rather than amplify the shock. Higher capital liquidity buffers combined with authority support measures have enabled banks to continue lending, thereby supporting economic recovery. Financial market infrastructures, particularly central counterparties, have functioned well despite challenging financial and operational conditions. To an important extent, this greater resilience is due to the regulatory reforms enacted post-2008. The Basel III framework, the shift to mandatory central clearing, and steps taken to end too big to fail have all helped to make the core of the global financial system more resilient. Now, at the same time, the market turmoil last March has underscored the need to strengthen resilience in non-bank financial intermediation, or NBFI. While the, with the overall growth of NBFI due to market-driven adjustments and the G20 regulatory reforms, market liquidity has become more central to financial resilience. Last March, the dash for cash resulted in liquidity mismatches that overwhelmed key funding markets. Public authorities needed to take a wide range of measures to support liquidity and the supply of credit to the real economy. Now, these developments define the key area of what I think is a very active FSB policy work agenda for 2021. The first is to draw lessons from COVID-19 for financial stability, including whether the reforms the G20 put in place following the 2008 financial crisis are working as intended and where they may not be. This work will look at the use of capital and liquidity buffers by financial institutions, and how well crisis management and operational resilience arrangements have functioned. It will also examine whether and how procyclicality has affected the financial system. So we're working on these issues in coordination with the standard setting bodies and provide the G20 with an interim report on initial lessons learned in July and a final report in October. It's probably obvious that any lessons learned at this stage will be preliminary, but it is important for us to critically assess our actions early on. The second area is CCP financial resources. Recent periods of market turmoil have further demonstrated the positive effect that central clearing can offer for global financial stability. However, the shift to central clearing has also further increased the systemic importance of central counterparties as we knew it would. Now to this end, the FSB will collaborate with a Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructure, CPMI, and IOSCO on work that will consider the need for, and as appropriate, develop international policy on the use, composition, and amount of financial resources necessary to strengthen the resilience and resolvability of CCPs further in default and non default loss scenarios. Last but certainly not least, one area where we have already started to draw lessons is NBFI. We've embarked on a comprehensive and ambitious work program to strengthen the resilience of, NB, of the NBFI sector while preserving its benefits. So this work program includes 
work to address specific risk factors that contributed to amplification of the shock last March, work to enhance our understanding of systemic risks in NBFI, and investigating policies to address systemic risk in NBFI. A key focus this year is to develop policy proposals to enhance the resilience of money market funds. The structural vulnerabilities in some types of money market funds relate to the greater role of liquidity I mentioned before, liquidity mismatches in money market funds and investor perceptions of these funds being uh, equivalent to cash. Now, identifying policy options to enhance money market fund resilience will include consideration of the appropriate structure of the MM money market fund sector itself and the role of potential vulnerabilities in the underlying short-term funding markets. We are working in close collaboration with standard setters and plan to publish a consultative report with policy proposals to enhance money market fund resilience in July. So other work on NBFI will entail examining the frameworks and dynamics of margin calls and the liquidity management preparedness of market participants to meet margin calls. Um, it will also include examining the experience of certain types of open-ended funds that face redemption pressures during the March turmoil, the structure and liquidity provision in core funding markets during stress, including the role of leveraged investors and factors that limit dealer capacity or willingness to intermediate. And we will look at the interaction of US dollar funding pressures and fund outflows in emerging market economies. Let me turn to innovation. The COVID-19 experience has put the spotlight on the need to harness the benefits of financial innovation while containing any financial stability risks. So issues related to operational and cyber resilience have become even more pressing in sustained remote work environments. And similarly, Limited personal mobility has underscored the need to improve cross-border payment arrangements and financial inclusion. The most comprehensive initiative in, in this area is the FSB roadmap designed to make cross-border payments cheaper, faster, more transparent, and more inclusive. A goal that requires strong commitment, coordination, and accountability from the international community, both public and private sectors. The G20 endorsed the roadmap last October, and one of the first steps in implementing it involves the setting of quantitative targets at the global level for improving outcomes for end users. These targets will be important for defining the ambition of our work and for creating accountability. We will deliver an overall progress report on the implementation of the roadmap together with a final set of targets in October for G20 endorsement. Now, innovation underpins the whole cross-border payments roadmap, and in many cases in the form of improvements to existing payment systems. But there are also two building blocks that focus squarely on new digital payments instruments, stable coins and central bank digital currencies. As stable coins continue to evolve, comprehensive and effective oversight of such instruments at the national and international level will be of the utmost importance. Last year, the FSB published 10 high-level recommendations on the regulation, supervision, and oversight of global stable coins. Building on this work, we will continue discussions of regulatory and supervisory approaches with respect to stable coins and how to underpin these with effective cross-border cooperation and coordination. Um, I would also like to say a word on cyber resilience at Catherine mentioned at the beginning, we are now turning our attention to ensuring greater harmonization of regulatory reporting of cyber incidents. This will enable more effective monitoring of cyber incidents, support the efficient supervision of cyber risks at financial institutions, and facilitate the coordination and sharing of information relating to cyber incidents across borders and sectors. Um, and maybe this point is a good segue into my, my uh, third uh, area, which is on um, uh, preserving an integrated global financial system. Um, I think the backdrop is, is a positive one in the sense that the policy response to COVID-19 has underlined policymakers' awareness of the harmful effects of market fragmentation and the need for international cooperation and coordination. 
the FSB agreed and the G20 endorsed a set of principles to underpin policy measures taken in response to COVID-19 and to iterate, reiterate FSB members' commitment to common international standards. So guided by these principles, FSB member authorities have made use of the flexibility built into existing uh, financial standards. Um, and authorities will also coordinate on the future timely unwinding of the temporary measures taken in order to minimize the risk of unnecessary fragmentation during a future exit period. Work to prevent harmful market fragmentation also continues across a range of FSB initiatives on regulatory and supervisory policies and in the area of resolution. It is critical that we also extend the awareness to new areas and here first and foremost, the way we address financial risks from climate change. Addressing issues related to climate change and supporting a sustainable recovery is a key priority of the Italian G20 presidency. More generally, an increased sense of urgency has resulted in a proliferation of work on climate change. This current momentum on climate related work is very welcome, but it also underlines the importance of good coordination. The FSB with its broad and diverse membership, which includes the standard setting bodies and international organizations is well placed to ensure that the work on the financial risks of climate change fits together. We are also working closely with a network on greening the financial system on our common goals. The FSB currently has three specific initiatives underway to coordinate work on climate, on data, on disclosures, and on regulatory and supervisory practices. The FSB has been asked to report uh, by the G20 to report in July on ways to promote consistent, high quality climate disclosures that are in line with the recommendations of the task force on climate related financial disclosures, the TCFD, and the data necessary for the assessment of financial stability risks and where, the, uh, where data gaps remain. So let me conclude. Um, I focused in my remarks on the changes that COVID-19 is bringing about to the work of the FSB. But equally, I could have talked about the importance of continuity in our work. This includes continuity in our efforts to address financial stability risks identified earlier, such as ensuring a smooth transition away from LIBOR. And equally important is the continuity, continuity in the way we work. Our collaborative member-led approach, together with close interaction with external stakeholders, including on events like the one today, continues to provide the basis for promoting a resilient and integrated global financial system in an effective way. That concludes my remarks. Thank you very much for your attention.